Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. And welcome to Art Exploration with Jessica from Color Me Creative, Kelly from Kelly Chassis Fine Art, and me from Indigo Jade Art, where every month in 2020 we are taking a deeper dive and exploring a new color. All three of us met as online teachers, and we just love teaching and exploring new mediums. This month, we're exploring the color pink. It's one of my favorite colors. I know I say that about every color, but pink is the one. You can also participate in our monthly challenge and dive in a bit more with us in our private Facebook group. The link to join is listed below. All right, let's get started and dive into our project for October and explore all of my favorite colors, my favorite watercolors in pink. So I'm going to take a deeper dive into each color and we're also going to make these super fun pink pumpkins for a fun card project using a brush stroke technique. I'm super excited. Okay, let's walk through my favorite pink watercolors. First up is Opera Pink, and this is the Daniel Smith version of Opera Pink, but you're going to find Opera Pink or this bright fluorescent pink in many different brands, and you'll probably see it in your stash that you have at home. My next favorite is Rhodonite Genuine, and this is from the Daniel Smith brand. I really like this. It uses genuine rhodonite, a mineral, and I love it. Okay, here is Shell Pink. This is a really fun pink from Holbein, and I'm going to show you guys how to make this kind of opaque pink in a little bit with some gouache with any of the colors that you have in your stash. So I'm going to go over that in a little kind of mini lesson. This is quinacridone pink from Daniel Smith. And I really like quinacridone pink and quinacridone rose because when you add water to them, it, you can really change the value of this pink and really make it really, really bright pink. So you can get different variations in the hues of these two colors by adding a lot of water. Okay, so let's talk about making a more opaque pink color like this shell pink here. So I'm going to do this little technique here with opera pink and some gouache paint. I'm also going to do it with a quinacridone coral to try to get really close to that shell pink color there. So just know that you can use a white gouache paint or a white paint with your watercolors and create a more opaque version of that color. So I put some of the white down on my little palette here, and I also put some of the opera pink down, just a little tiny bit. I've got two brushes here, a number four round and a number eight round. Um, you can use whatever brushes that you have at home. I've got some water and a little microfiber towel as well for blotting. And these are just the simple tools that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. I'm mixing up that opera pink and I'm just getting it wet and nice and juicy. And I'm going to blend the watercolor opera pink with the white gouache paint. You can see I'm just kind of spinning my brush around in that little palette there, that little well. Now look at that pink. It's sort of like a Pepto Bismo pink, isn't it? But I happen to like that shade of color. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint this down onto my 100% cotton watercolor paper here. And I'm going to show you how opaque I can get that opera pink color to be just by adding a little bit of that white. Okay, now I want to try to replicate that shell pink. The Holbein shell pink color is really, really nice color to have, but it's sometimes kind of hard to find. So if you have any kind of watercolors in your stash, you can recreate some of these opaque looks, again, just by adding a little bit of white gouache to the mix. So I put a little bit of that quinacridone coral down and I'm mixing it up with the white gouache. Now, 
Gouache paint is an opaque watercolor. If you want to use an acrylic white, you're going to get a little bit of a different effect, but you can absolutely use that and you probably have it in your stash. But a white gouache is always a good thing to have in your stash so that you can mix it up with your watercolors and then create a whole brand new line of colors. Now look at the opacity here using that quinacridone coral. Just love that color. Not quite shell pink, but close enough. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplies that I'm going to be using for today's project. I have a piece of 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is from the Arteza line, and I will have all of that information linked down below if you're looking for that paper. And I'm using this paper because we're going to be doing some wet into wet techniques to create these super fun brush stroke pumpkins and all that granulation from the watercolor, especially the Daniel Smith watercolor. I really want that texture to show. So I love that paper for it. Okay, let's go over the brush stroke pumpkins technique. It is so super simple. Okay, this is what I'm calling the brush stroke pumpkin technique. We are going to be using a round brush and we're going to paint and draw these pumpkins in. So I've got my number eight brush and I'm just getting it nice and juicy and wet. And you're gonna wanna use a round brush for this. I'm gonna go ahead and dip into that little bit of wash paint that I created. And you're gonna start off by doing these little crescent curves with your brush. So you're bending the belly of your brush and creating these crescent curves, two on the left, two on the right. And now we're just going to draw and paint in an oval-like shape in the center. So you can start to see that the shape of the pumpkin is coming together. Now I'm just going to take my wet brush and just start to connect those bottom C crescent shapes and connect the top and just kind of bring this whole shape together so that we get that bottom of the pumpkin to kind of come to shape here. Now I'm just adding a little bit of an opera pink in here. So while everything is still wet, I'm just dropping in some more color just to get a little bit of variation in color between the two watercolor paints that I used. And we want to keep that distance. So I've got a little bit of that white from the paper showing through in between each of the little C brush curves that we created. We want to keep that there because that just kind of gives us the overall skin texture of the pumpkin. Super simple. Okay, so I've got some cascade green here and we've got the shape of our pumpkin in place. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this cascade green to make the stem. Now I'm just drawing little lines and using the pumpkin sections as my guide, drawing little lines here and then just kind of making, painting and drawing in that stem closing it off at the top and then I'm going to use the paint that is in the stem and just draw it down to the bottom here. Now that cascade green is going to bleed into the pumpkin and it's going to start to spider its way down so I'm just kind of coaxing it down a little bit so that those two colors just kind of bleed and blend and play well together and that cascade green is going to start to turn a little bit purple as it's mixed in with the pink. Okay, so let's go over the technique again and let's paint another pumpkin, this time a little bit slower and I'll walk you through it again. Okay, this one I'm going to do in the opera pink and it's going to be a real pale pink like pumpkin. So I'm adding quite a bit of water here and I'm getting that look and feel of like a 2% milk. So we've got a little bit of pigment, a whole lot of water, and we're going to get a little bit of a really faint look and feel of that opera pink. So I'm going to start with my first C curve. So I've got my brush and I started with the brush completely horizontal and then using the whole belly of the brush, 
bend the brush down and create that C curve. You can see that my opera pink is really faint. Okay, going in again, laying the whole belly of the brush down, leaving some space, some white space between the two C curves. You can start to see that the skin texture of the pumpkin on the left hand side is starting to come together. So let's go ahead and move to the right. I'm going to repeat the same technique using the whole belly of the brush and creating that C or crescent shape around the right hand side here. And then I'm going to create the second one, the second C shape to create that whole outer edge of our pumpkin. And that shape is just really, really coming together. I love that. Oh, so super simple, these brush stroke pumpkins. You could paint these all day long. It would be so much fun. Okay, now I'm going to go into the center here and try to keep my space, keep my white space and, keep, and retain that white space on the left and the right, creating that oval shape in the center. And I'm going to let a little bit more white show in the paper so that we get a little bit of texture and dimension there. So my brush is clean and I'm just connecting all of the pieces, all of the crescent shapes together so that we get the look and feel and appearance of a whole pumpkin, a whole shape. Just loving that. That opera pink is so, I've got it, it's so faint. Look how lovely that color is. Oh, okay. So it's dried a little bit and I'm going to go back in and just add a little bit more of that opera pink just to create a little bit more um, texture and dimension. So you see I'm dropping it in. I'm not like painting it on. I'm just dropping it in and I'm slowly feathering it out in different areas so that we can start to build up that shape of the pumpkin and see the different parts of the skin texture. So just going back and forth, adding a little bit here and there, cleaning my brush in between. Sometimes I'm, I'm not picking up pigment, I'm just working with what's on the page and just um, blending it out. So super fun, you can play, you can go back and forth with this. You can add some pigment from your palette or you can just work with what you've got there. So I'm dipping my brush into the Cascade Green and I'm going to create that stem. So again, I'm going to draw four lines and I'm using the white space that I have in the texture already. So the, the white from the paper and I'm just using them as my anchor points to draw in the stem with my brush. Close the top off clean off my brush and then use the paint that's already there and blend it out and blend it down into the opera pink that's there and let those colors blend and bleed and just kind of have some fun together. So I'm dipping my brush back into that opera pink and I'm adding a little bit more color to the bottom and I'm just kind of going in and doing some quick flick flicking, some quick flick strokes just to, to create a little bit more color there and just layering. So this technique is called glazing. I didn't necessarily let everything dry in between, but I did want to get that color to be a little bit more intense and it's just so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a few more details. So I'm going back to that first brush stroke pumpkin that we did in the very beginning. And I'm going in with a little bit of the opera pink and you can see I'm just flicking and fluttering in with my brush some line work in the pumpkin to create just that extra le level of texture and dimension. And this is a super simple technique. You're just painting it in, drawing it in. You can see how it looks in this pumpkin. It does help add a lot of extra texture and dimension. Okay, so I've taken my scissors and I've cut the pumpkins out that I've already painted. And we're going to use those pumpkins as embellishments for our card front. So you can cut out the pumpkins that you have already painted and you can use them as an embellishment 
for the front of your card. And this is an A2 sized card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half card front. And I'm just positioning those cute little pumpkins on the front. Now let's talk about the freebie. You can grab a free download of the brush stroke pumpkins that I created as embellishments for your own card. Now I know you're going to paint your own, but if you want some of the ones that I created, you can grab the link down below and download them for free, cut them out and put them on your card fronts. Okay, let's take a final look at the pumpkins and the card project. I am digging these pink pumpkins. They are so full of joy and they're super simple to create. It's October, fall is here, so start painting some pumpkins and have some fun. I hope you enjoyed today's art exploration tutorial. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and head on over to Kelly and Jessica's channels to subscribe and watch their color exploration for this month as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.